How you guys doing? How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. Good. We practiced today. We had um, the Pasquale family come out and present. Well, we we switched Nick. Uh, we switched um, Joshua Swift's number to 36 for that reason to have uh, him represent Nick Pasquale. So we had the Pasquale family come out today, present him with a $10,000 check that goes to him from their foundation. He represents the foundation, the family, and Nick here at UCLA. And, uh, that's that. But um, the guys that have been wearing that number, we had uh, Ethan Fernand, Alex Johnson. So it's all been really good walk-ons that have uh, shown like what it truly is to be a brewer. And you know, that's really what Nick held up when he was here just in that short amount of time. So I'm just happy that uh, Swifty was pretty excited to, to switch his number and not to caught up the, you know, what some kids are usually caught up in jersey numbers, but just more of a meaning behind it. So it was pretty awesome. Does he, does he get a scholarship with that? Well, Nobody has the money that it's, it's a little bit. Yeah. Was that before practice, after practice? When? Uh, having the parents? No, so they just did it just now. Okay. Yeah, he didn't know. We knew they were coming this weekend. Um, it was kind of a surprise for him. So. And we wanted to do it in front of the team. Mm -hmm. um, there'll be a little bit of, there'll be more videos and you'll see Josh speaking on it and stuff like that, what it means to him. Uh, big rally by the defense today to, to win. Uh, what did you think overall of, of how it went? I, I just like that they were still competing in the last period because it was hot today. You know, so the fact that guys came out, they were competing hard. Um, defense didn't quit because they were down a lot. Um, I was just glad that they came out and you know it came down to a three last play of the game and, and uh, defense came through. So you know they're competing at a high level. I appreciate that. I just like guys are showing up and being the same guy each day. So as long as we can continue to do that, we'll be good. Ethan looks still to be very locked in right now. Yeah, yeah, Ethan's the one. He's our uh, he's best QB one. He's you guys are watching. Him. He's spinning the pretty well. You know, his leadership has has really grown, and he's just taking on the role of you know being QB one. And it looks like uh, TJ is back to being more explosive than he was in the spring. Have you seen that? Yeah, okay. TJ looks pretty good. You know, he lost a little bit of weight, so we just wanted him. To, um, I think. Um, he looks more explosive because he knows the plays a little bit more. You know what I mean? When you're thinking and going, it's kind of a little different. It's kind of hard. So I think he's, he's more, a little bit more comfortable with the offense. Injury-wise, it looked like Garrett uh, had some kind of ankle thing, but maybe avoided a serious injury. Yeah, I just held him out at the end, but he was able to come back out. He just did his job. Josh Carlin was not in there. What was going on with Josh? I did not see that, but I know he did practice all the way up to him. So I didn't see it in the training room. Oh, I mean, just in the shed. I'm sure it was just some of Somebody got some reps. How about uh, Jalen Davies? Davies, uh, lower extremity. No no ligaments, no pulls or anything, just a little fatigue. So uh, back before not too long? Yeah, probably. I think he did a little bit like Indy yesterday. Mm -hmm. And then kind of shut him down a little bit today. We'll see what he did. Wallace? AJ Wallace? AJ Wallace. Um, What does Justin Martin do to kind of push Ethan and maybe go for that backup spot too? Oh, uh, that's up for grabs right now. We're trying to find out who's going to be the two. Um, Ethan has kind of pulled away from the rest of those guys, so it's not really them pushing him anymore. It's more Ethan just pushing themselves. But we need somebody to come out and solidify that 32. What did you think about the, the pass rush today, the guys on the edge, and how they did? They're doing a good job. Um, they're just finding ways to get to the quarterback, all the guys. So if it's Femi coming off the edge, if it's Busick, if it's Devin, Apu, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm excited for the D-line. And we got a couple more guys in the hole that are on their way too. So once we get them out of there. Well, like Kane, Kane might have been doing some of that too. Kane did a little yeah. bit of that today also too. So like I said before, it's going to be hard to replace a, the 15th pick and then the two, the twins. So I think it's going to be a, a, a collective group of guys that are, Helping and, and getting the pressure on the quarterback. How long until Sharif is able to participate? Um, I'm not sure yet. I don't want to put dates on anybody, but he's trending in the right direction of losing weight, so we're just waiting. And same with Jalen Berger? Yeah. I think that's going to be pretty soon. It's coming up. But I, I just want to take my time because, sure. you 
You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm just scared that we'll, we'll end up losing it, so I'm truly going to take my time. You know? What was what is the definition of uh, you run a play? Uh, what what gives the full point the offense versus the defense? What's the cutoff? For, what is well, the so in the situation, so it was red zone, first, second, and third down, depending on what it was. Um, first and ten, if they can get maybe four, four, four or more. Um, second down, they got to get the first down, third down, same thing. Third down was two points, so whoever got the third down got two points. Can you talk a little bit about Scott White and what he's kind of meant to that linebacker room? Um, just a great linebacker coach. You know, he's coached most of the really good guys that came through here. He was coach Moore. Uh, Brick was here also, but he coached Miles Jack, BK, Anthony Barr, Zomo, um, Kenny Young. You know, so he's, he's coached a lot of guys. And, you know, they respond to him, so I just wanted to know some guys back, but uh, did a good job when they were here. Uh, when he came out of bounds, a favorite target of Ethan, I mean, is he poised for maybe an all-conference type season, you think? Yeah, most definitely. You know, um, he truly has an opportunity to win the, the Mac game, so I'm excited to see him and just see how he progresses throughout the season. But, you know, he, he can block on the edge and he can catch passes, so yeah, he's a big target. We saw some coaches out there with headsets. Um, was that the first time you did that in fall camp, or what was the communication? Uh, it's just like? it's just so um, Akaiga can talk to the D line. I mean, to the the Green Dot uh, players, so whichever one he has in there. It was just a player to co the coach the player. Was that switch, or will it be a specific guy on the field? I don't know if you want to say who it is. Yeah, or... I'm not gonna say who it yeah. is, but it's specific guys on the field. So okay. You can't have two out there on the same time. You can't have two. Okay, yeah. Uh, what do you think about uh, Tavake, given what uh, happened to Garrett, and w was he, w what did he show you as far as what he was able to do out there? Yeah, the Prongos came in to Tavake State, so it was um, Prongos did a pretty good job, but they're rotating. They've been progressing, so it's it's a uh, it's good to get younger guys reps in live situations and uh, with the ones too. So I just wanted to see him with the one line. I know if that was a game, Garrett probably would have came back, but um, it was just good to give these young guys some reps especially in a competition in the red zone. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.